welcome back to the Flix Forum Podcast, where each episode we go back and we check out a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today, we have Netflix 70, oh no, we have the 80th film. 80. 80 number 80. It's the 2018 drama Come Sunday, directed by Joshua Marston. It stars Chiwetel Eljafor, Jason Segel, Condola Richard, Lakeith Stanfield, Stacey Sargent, Vondi Curtis-Hall, Danny Glover, and Martin Sheen. I'm Jesse, and I'm here with MJ. How are you, Jesse? Good. How are you? I'm very, very well. What a great cast. Number 80. You know what? Before, so I write a few little notes on every movie we watch. Not too much. I, I try and write a few, but before I write it, I write the title of the film, mm-hmm. and I write the number mm-hmm. of Netflix film. And man, it was nice writing 80. 80. It's a nice, solid, straight number. 80. We've done well. Whew. If we don't Crazy. So ourselves. We start our show off with our fast flicks, where we each give our own little summary of our thoughts on the film. MJ, what are your thoughts on Come Sunday? Um, it's based on the true story of renowned Bishop Carlton Pearson, who strays away from what he's preached his entire life when he begins to interpret certain passages of the Bible differently and choosing to believe that hell might not exist. I really like that. That was nice. <laughs> that was good. I... Mine's very similar, but not as long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a fast week, so I did, I did take my time with No, that. you were still fast. Uh, <laughs> I've just said it's a bishop who struggles with the common interpretation of doctrine, or doctrine, and um, he wants to promote more inclusion and love. That's where I'm at, going from. Yeah, done. This is coming from a guy, Jesse. Weren't you Bible captain or church captain? <laughs> There's a school? possibility that um, in high school I may have been, yeah, Jesus captain. Jesus so, um, captain. What was the actual term? Um... Religion captain? Religion I think it was religion captain. captain I so. didn't do religion at my school. Yeah, so. very... Um, you did. Jesse told me this like two weeks ago, like completely, <laughs> like we didn't even know this film was coming up. Nah. Um, I think we're going to have a few discussions about religion at some point in the next half There's hour a possibility <laughs> and um, there's a possibility, yeah, like I... Yes, I, I, I grew up through um, a Catholic education system, but uh, since school, I've had very little to do with that. So... Um, yeah, I'm, there's a possibility that maybe I, I connected with um, the the main protagonist in this film a little bit as well. Yeah, and I look full disclosure from me as well. I I am Catholic, grew up Catholic, but not overly Catholic. I go to yeah. church once a year on Christmas Eve. I believe in God, but maybe not to the letter of the Bible. So yeah, uh, just so you know where we're coming from when we start talking about <laughs> it, this stuff. Because it's it's a it's a tricky conversation it, when it you is, talk about yeah. religion. So. Good disclosure, I like that. And while we're doing disclosures, let's do a spoiler alert as well. Sure. If you haven't seen the movie Come Sunday and you're interested in seeing it before you listen to us, we are going to spoil the film in the next... Uh, oh, you, you know how long this episode is by the time you're listening to it, but we don't actually know how long it's going to be, so let's say a half hour to an hour. Good. All right, so we start our show after our fast flicks with our little film history or anything that we've learned about this film. There's, what have you learned, Andrew? Like, yeah, well, obviously, Bishop Carlton Pearson mm. is a real dude. Yeah. Um, so it's based on a real story. Mm. And from what I can gather, you know, based pretty closely on his story. Um, I think there, there are a few things that were whether sped up in timelines or a few characters that were like an amalgamation of other characters, other characters yeah. just to make it cleaner. But um, he was on This American Life, the, the radio podcast, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, and that basically sparked the idea behind this film. Yeah, and the the host of that radio show, um, I think it was Ira Glass. She went on to produce this film too. So um, they used her her interview to yeah form the basis for this film. Like you said, have you listened to any This American Life? Well, isn't This American Life um, the serial serial? Yeah, serial, it's yeah. one of them. I'm pretty sure it rings a bell every time I. I'm pretty hits. sure they used to say This American Life presented by serial or something like that. I'm pretty sure. I think I, I've. It's either that or so I, I listen to very few episodic podcasts. I listen to a lot of. Ironically, as we have a podcast that we're releasing, I don't listen to a lot of episodic podcasts, but I have listened to Serial. I have listened to things like S Town, like the big ones. That, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure one of them is This American Life. It's probably Serial. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the, yeah, the film um has a little bit of a background to it, a little bit of a story as to how it got to where it got to now. So Jonathan Demi was actually initially attached to this film back in twenty. 20- uh, like 2014, I think, when it first, they first okay. started having talks about it. So John, Jonathan Demi was the Academy Award winning director of Science of the Lambs. Um, and it also had Jeffrey Wright down to play um, Carlton Pearson. Hmm. So eventually that kind of all fell through. And when Jonathan Demi left the film, Jeffrey Wright left it as well. So in July 2016, Josh Marston then came on to direct the film. 
Uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor also came on board to play Pearson, and Netflix also jumped on at that point um, to distribute the film. So that was July 2016, and then by January 2017, they had all their eggs in a row. Yep, started uh, filming. And they started filming. There's, there's, so um, Carlton Pearson's mentor in this, um, Oral Roberts, was played by Martin Sheen. It was, yep. And um, originally they had Robert Redford down to play that role, which I th- would have been his third um, Netflix original film. Who For a thought? guy who's not doing a lot <laughs> right, right now, he's... Uh, He's pumped really out a few of the last off few years. Netflix, maybe. <laughs> so I thought that was um, a little bit of a nice little Netflix connection. But he actually left. Like, he didn't leave for any other reason than he had scheduling issues. Yeah. So it was during pre-production. He left quite late. <laughs> um, and the, it, like you mentioned before, like the the role played by Jason Siegel of Henry, mm. it's a composite character of a lot of assistants that um, Carlton had yeah, know, during his, his stage. Yeah. So then it, it premiered at Sundance uh, on January 21 back in 2018 mm-hmm. and then released worldwide on Netflix on the 13th of April. So yeah. a little bit of time in between. So the events of this film, they take place in Tulsa in Oklahoma. They do. It was filmed in and around Atlanta, Georgia though. And Atlanta, Georgia, they the reason was for the tax incentives. So, so save some money. Save some money. And a lot of like you know, a lot of the, the Marvel films film in Georgia. It, it's a, you know, this hotbed of... of a place to film yeah, okay. the incentives they get They're spending all their money on Edgy4 and Siegel and Sheen and like I've got that recognition now in my brain where you know you go through the credits and as soon as you see that peach on the screen um, it's like oh bang, it's done in Georgia oh so, there you go um, yeah it, you're good like that you, you, just pick up on random yeah, things that mean nothing to no one except myself no 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 that's interesting <laughs> I like to hear it that's, that's a whole part of this section we yeah. think it's for the audience I just like to hear what you have to tell me the the working title for this was Heretics yep. uh, which I thought was interesting because so that was the name of the episode, the episode of the podcast, the podcast yeah. Yeah, or the radio show radio and show. so for the director um, he made a comment he's like this, this is a really important story that he wanted to tell because he felt like in this um, era of fake news um, and really hardening religious divisions this is this that's why you want to tell this story now so well so obviously there's a little bit of a story here that's happening at the time hmm. um you obviously weren't aware of it you didn't know nah, this no nah, new story for me yeah me too yeah. i wasn't sure if i was supposed to i wasn't sure how big this news was you know we've had films before that are very american that we aren't aware of because we're not from america and i wasn't sure if this might be one of them as well uh it, it sort of brings back memories of that um one that we we saw that was about the most Madeline, hated most hated woman in America. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Because I think we, we, we were supposed to know about her. Yeah. Everyone else knew about that story, but yeah. except for us. What about consensus? Yeah, not bad. Um, so it's a 5.9 out of 10 on IMDb, yeah. 1,700 re- uh, ratings. Yep. And it's a 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd, so very similar. Yeah. 903 ratings, so not a heap of ratings. Um, and it got mixed reviews, but... Chiwetel Ejiofor did get rave reviews for his performance. Um, yeah, and we're going to get into that later, I'm sure. This one was a bit lower on the Google users' oh, uh, no. percentages, 79. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is yeah, quite a little bit down on Come our previous on Google, ones. what are you doing? Who's right. going on you, Google, uh, typing in Come Sunday and going, I didn't like this film. Thumbs down, thumbs oh, down. Just move on if you didn't like it. Rotten Tomatoes. 68% on 34 reviews, which makes it fresh. 34. So that was obviously Sundance. So there were a few critics, yeah, critics watching it there. The audience was a bit lower on 59% on nearly 150 ratings. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of reflective of, you know, it's kind of that middle of the road. Look, it's a three out of five on Letterboxd. And if I'm going to rate a movie three stars, I like that movie, right? Yep. So it's it's not bad. Did you have a Netflix match, percentage match? <sighs> Again, No. No. I didn't, and it's starting to piss me off, Jesse. <laughs> I didn't have one for this one either, though, so it's okay. We're in the same boat for this one. I tried the the trick to see if I could uh, didn't add work it. For you? Nah, it didn't work. Didn't okay. work. Didn't work. I wonder what made you think that in the first place. I don't know. I was was trying to come up with some. Oh, so understanding. You, hadn't, you hadn't done it, or you thought you might have done was, it? Yeah, I thought I might have, and okay. that's what. But no, nah, obviously okay. no, nah, didn't well, work. We we'll have to find. Maybe we can send Netflix an angry email <laughs> saying we want some Netflix matches, please. Please, yes, Talk for everything. That. I don't want a percentage. Surely the data you have on me, you can give me a percentage yeah. match for everything. Yeah, give me a ten percent if you don't think I like it. <laughs> yeah. Then we wouldn't watch it though. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. We're we dedicated would, we to this would, podcast. We yeah. watched um, Paradox. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. What, what? Let's get into our early thoughts on this one. Fill me in your early thoughts on this film. What did you think? Oh, Jesse, I um. I was all in on this film. Oh, good. I thought it was completely stirring. Mm. Um, Chiwetel Ejiofor was 
one of the most powerful performances I've seen in a long time. I thought he was incredible. I also thought Jason Segel was great. Um, I look forward to watching him in more dramatic characters um, after watching him in The Discovery on Netflix yeah. as well, which I thought he was great. Lakeith Stanfield is always great. Um, I think this role was a little bit more uh, low-key for him, but he barely puts a foot wrong. Um, and the content and the conversation was just mesmerizing for me. I think the arguments either way and some of the big dialogue scenes, I was eating out of the palm of his hand. I loved this film. Loved it. Wow. I... I, I... <laughs> I thought you were going to hate this. <laughs> I honestly thought you were not going to like this one at all. Oh. So I'm shocked. I'm like shell shocked. I, I, I was like, we were I talking just, last week how you think you know me so well. Yeah, I was, I've got no idea because I did not think you were going to like this. I thought you were going to. Yeah, that's all right. Here that's good. Are. What did you? Think? I'm similar to like the the cast engaged me without even seeing a moment of this film. So going in knowing that these people are in it, I'm like, I'm going to be engaged at least. That's true. While this is based on a true story. Um, so I get that they're not going to change fact for um, for the film. There was a part in this film where um, the Carlton sort of has this inspiration for his change by watching this footage for Rwanda. Yep. And I don't know why, but this really put me off in in the middle section of the film because I had in my mind at the start of the film that um, they've set this in 1998. So then I couldn't work out because I did like back in my um, university days and, and high school days, like I did a lot of work on the Rwandan genocide and I knew like, I'm like, that's 1994 in my head. So to me, I was just struggling with this confusion of why has it taken him four years to work out what's been going on? And that, that, that's just me personally. Um, but other than that, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed the film. But that really put me off for a big chunk of this film. Well, what was happening in Rwanda in 98? I, I don't know. And I, obviously still wasn't Yeah, it was great. still obviously on the news. But I, I just... It just confused me having this big thing at the start saying it was in 1998 and then me like thinking, okay, I'm sure Rwanda was in 1994. Look, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Rwanda no, was like, in 1998. Regardless of whether it was it or now. it wasn't... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was just it just it if just, it was ninety eight, you're gonna look like an absolute dick. I am because this, look- this film, <laughs> <laughs> this film was jaded for you, and like it just I, maybe uh, yeah, I've learned everything wrong. It's nah. It's, so it was from April to July nineteen ninety four. Okay, so, so that it just put me off because I couldn't work out why it took him four years to have his revelation. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sound inc- incredibly ignorant right now because in nineteen ninety four. I was I was just starting primary school. Yeah. Like I wasn't very old, <laughs> so I wasn't aware of the the coverage of the Rwanda genocide at the time. Now, is it is it feasible that in 1994 that the coverage internationally of the Rwanda genocide wasn't that big? You you are 100 percent on track. The 1994 it was like it was a denial that anything yeah. was happening. So I get that, but like still for I, I don't know. I just it just threw me off. So, but maybe it was 98 when everything started, started to, come to come out. out yeah. I must admit, when that started to happen, I was like, oh, this is a film about him helping in Rwanda. Rwanda yeah. that's, oh, yeah. that's what I thought was going to happen. And then he went to his next sermon. And he, <laughs> yeah. he completely threw everything out. All right. So you liked it? Yeah, I did. I, I enjoyed it. You saw through, I saw through him it. being a Just... bad person for ignoring Rwanda for four years. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Character time. Let's talk about some characters. And we, you need, we have to start this with Bishop Carlton Pearson. Carlton Pearson. Do you want to start with, with him? Sure. So... Every character that we're going to talk about in this film, I'm going to discuss based on him and the impact that they had on him. That's fair. Because to me, the rest of the the cast are insignificant other than their connection to him. Yep. No, that's I, just how I'm reading it. That's um, fair. I will, I will jump in if I don't think yeah. you're right, but on, on face value, yeah. it seems all right. So to me, he, he, was, he was a believer and he never stopped believing. Although he's, um, you know, he'd, he'd been taught that heaven and hell existed and you know people needed to seek god he just had this revelation that you know he didn't stop believing but he he took things more literally where he thought you know jesus died for everyone and um even those that that didn't accept god could be taken in heaven and i don't see anything wrong with that no um and there may be people that watch this film that do see thing and obviously we saw people in his church get up and oh, leave yeah. based on majority on his preach yeah. but I just liked that you could have a religious, um, like a head that icon, an icon that you could relate to and understand. Okay, hey, maybe we need to switch things up a bit. Maybe we need to change. Maybe we need to adapt and and move forward. Yeah, and I wonder if this is why 
this film works on a mainstream level because that notion is so accessible mm. to people who aren't overly religious. Mm. Um, and I think we'll get into that later on as well because I, I think there's a... You need to be careful when you're treading on this kind of ground because they, they do take a side with the w- the way they portray religion and what they believe. Yeah. Um, what I like about the way they shot Carlton, um, particularly early on, is that he was so flustered and so uninspired in the scenes at the beginning and his family home was really dark and it was really cold and it was really lifeless and that brief period where he gets that message from God and, and um, you know everything kind of changes in his not his beliefs per se, but no. the, the... The interpretation. The, yeah, of the interpretation yeah. of his beliefs, good point. He's light and he's confident and he's assured and the scenes in his house, all of a sudden, they're really bright. Mm. And you notice that when, when Jason Siegel's character and they'll come to his house, like, I've never seen that room in your house before, but because this is a guy who's, like, actually enlightened mm. um, and they show you that really well. Um, awesome pickup yeah it, it made it really easy for an audience member to read along with where that character's at and how he's feeling and that's that's taken away again right at the end and and he recedes back into the dark literally and a lot more close-ups of him you know feeling uninspired again and feeling lifeless and um, there's a scene towards the end in the um in that warehouse that he's looking for his new, and that that highlights that so well yeah just he, this he's, huge warehouse with literally him and the assistant and that's it and just show like but how many close-ups of him in there and, and all you can see is him and you feel trapped inside this frame. Yep. And Even though it was a huge environment, you could like, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. It was really clever. Yeah. Um, and, but again, when he, when he did have that enlightenment, he was, he was a different guy and he was so like free, free spirited and confident. And, um, I really liked the way they did that. And like, I don't know if we're going to mention it again, but I thought Chiwetel Ejiofor was unbelievable. I, I, it was I said it before, I was eating out of the palm of his hand. He was, his delivery, and I've seen a lot of stuff where he's in, and he was actually playing this character. This wasn't Chiwetel g 4 playing Chiwetel g 4 He was he was out of, you know, out of himself in this, and I loved it. I don't think I've seen him in anything I didn't like him in. He's one of those guys that you think, I think you, you always think he's bigger than he is. Mm. And then you go, well, actually, you know, he's done some good stuff, but... He never quite reached that movie star status. You know, he, he got nominated for that Oscar. Was, that it 12, was, was it 12 years of slave? 12 years of slave, like 2012, 2013, yeah. or wherever it was. And I think everyone just kind of expected, like, he's yeah. going to really... And I think he's got a really good career, and he's done some really good roles. Um, but he's never quite been that movie star. He's excellent in um, Serenity, which Serenity. is like the spin-off movie of Firefly, the Joss, ah, Joss right, Whedon the, TV show. Um, Space One. Yeah, he was, he was excellent in that. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's, just, he's great. Yeah, he's he's even good. in um, Secret in Their Eyes. He's very good in that as well. Um, but yeah, he's just... I just... I thought he was amazing. I really do. And I, I can't stress it. And I don't want to say this. You know what? I told myself I'm going to say it and now we're talking and I'm going to say it. <laughs> in, the, in the 80 films we've done on Netflix, yeah. this could be my favorite performance. Oh, wow. He was... He was Amazing. Spoiler alert for our um, top, I thought that, top yeah. 100. <laughs> top I'm like, that's still 20 weeks away. Wow. Well, okay, good. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sort of segue a little bit into his wife, Gina. Yep. Because she was almost my favorite character in this film. Uh, I thought that the way that she was through her relationship with Carlton was amazing. I just thought that from the start... You get this feeling that she feels threatened the whole time. She's in this relationship that she tells you it's practically an arranged marriage. Mm. And then when you start seeing these scenes that you're talking about where he's sort of had this new understanding and her, like, she she realizes, I actually love this guy. This guy mm. I'm with, like, I think she's, she's you know, she speaks differently and you know, she says, I feel more connected now. We, mm. I feel so much more connected. She's and, more empowered too. And she defends him. She looks out for him. She's... Like I just really enjoyed her as a character. Now you're gonna you're actually gonna support my notion of her right now with everything that you just said, and we kind of touched on it before that you did have a quite a historical religious background with school and, and growing up. Sure, but you're not particularly religious now, is that? Yeah, kind of how you'd say. Yeah. I think that most non-religious audience would really cling to her because yeah. she's that point of view that might reflect our own point of view, right? Yeah. Um, which is why she's kind of painted to be so rational and not bound by mm. what might happen in the four walls of the four walls of the church. And even though, even though Carlton does have this epiphanous moment, he's still bound by what he believes in 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 God. And I mean, it's even evident when he talks about you know gays. You know, you, you are gay, and I can appreciate that. But you don't have to. You don't have to do gay. Um, 
that sort of notion is still just like, ooh, like, ooh, why are you saying that? But she's not like that. And, no. and I think everyone else, you know, and we'll get to Henry in a second, everyone else is really just like, this is, this is my world. The religion is my world and everything that stands in, outside of that isn't that important to me. Yep. But she's kind of whole world, can yeah. see the whole thing. So Yep, 100, yeah. Back I think we, all, I said, we yeah. all kind of cling to cling it. To it yeah. You've mentioned Henry. Yeah. I, Jason Siegel was my highlight of Loved the performance. Him. He was excellent. Um, I just thought the, the, his performance was just superb. He, he, no, I, 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 you, yeah, you're so right. Like, I don't want to take away uh, from how... Because I thought Edgy Thought was yeah, great. great. doesn't mean yeah, Siegel no, was Like, for me, that was my standout in this film great. was him. And, you know, he's just this dedicated guy who's, like, stood by Carlton for years. He's looked out for him, did everything he wanted. He's fully dedicated to his faith. And, you know, even though they have their, their misunderstandings or their, their, their differing ideas about what's being interpreted, at the end, you, st- he still has, you still get to see him come back and be like, I learned from the best. Like, I just loved that whole arc of him. You're right. I appreciated that as well. Um, I think you, you absolutely nailed that. Henry, is, he's just so obsessed with, with God and mm. he needs everything to be how it is in the Bible. And in that sense, he doesn't necessarily think for himself. He's being told... And he believes it, and that's great. You know yep. what? If that's how you want to be, no problem. No problem from my p- point of view. But it's that whole epitome of the idea that your religious belief trumps everything else. Mm-hmm. And these guys who had this really serious friendship through twenty years, they built a lot together. Very civil with each other, still very friendly, but they weren't friends by the end of it. They literally went their yeah, separate, separate ways. ways, and it's just a crazy thought. But I guess it, you know it does happen with lots of with lots of other things outside religion, but there's something about religion that if you if you believe as much as you do and someone doesn't, then that doesn't work. Yeah, good point. I've got Reggie down next. Yeah. Because you mentioned before Lakeith Stanford, like he was good, but it was a, it's like a, it's a role that he's just sort of in the background a little yep. bit. But um, I appreciated that a part, like you had someone that obviously he had, um, you know, had this lifestyle that wasn't necessarily... Um, accepted by the church he was gay yep and the he makes comments like I don't know what I'd do without the church yeah. because for him um, you know it, it's just so important to him this community this this group of people he's got something to look forward to and I like at the end that we do get this sort of closure where it's like you know um, he gets told by Carl that you know I'm sort of going no, into no, my no, scenes because yeah. I don't want to go into yeah, my... Yeah, I, I was, I was my, trying to do that earlier. I'm no. trying to avoid my scenes. But like, still, no, no, if it's relevant, like. it's relevant. Yeah, so I just like that there was sort of like this acknowledgement at the end that it doesn't matter. It's how he lives, um, you know, he, how he lives his life that matters. And if he lives his life, how he lives his life, and he's a good person, Carlton's happy with that. Do you think he kind of... Did, did Reggie get... Um, what's the word? Did, did he kind of become okay with the way things ended with him and Carlton because their final meeting was a bit testy for a little bit and you know were you satisfied with the way Carlton kind of accepted him or Uh, because like the way I read it is Reggie ain't got long to live yeah I I read Reggie's on the way out Um, he admits he has that big conversation with Carlton and I know I'm going to go into your scenes here but uh, talking about you know what it, like being gay and doing gay they are the same thing like I'm gay that's the way it is I've been seeing someone this is all great do you think Carlton accepts that and do you think Reggie's happy with the way that finished up I, I, I wasn't sure I think that based on what you know about what Carlton goes on to do I think that he's promoting this acceptance so yeah. I, I, I have this feeling that yeah it's so hard without like, but do it go, like, yeah like I feel like that yeah he, he was happy with with um with his thoughts on how it is and he's promoted that acceptance mm. and and appreciating each other and love rather than focusing on sins i guess yeah yeah, yeah no exactly yeah reggie was interesting that whole gay thing when it came up i was like well this is another little situation yeah. we've got to work ourselves around yeah uh i've got uncle quincy down too oh yeah i've put it so um a small role just the for one Glover. scene for danny glover just the one scene but important because of course yeah the inability for Carlton to adapt or change his beliefs at the start led to Quincy's um, sort of downfall. And he wanted him to be there to save him um, for his faith. And, you know, he literally couldn't literally save him. And I feel like that that was really important to show that because, 
and this is getting into the scenes again, but like it's almost a mirror scene to Reggie at the end. 100%. Yeah. I thought and, the exact yeah, same and thing. I just thought that it was, he was an important character to touch on because without that character in that small one scene, you don't get that that full picture circle of what happened. Yeah. I mean, after Quincy dies and, um, and Carlton goes to visit Oral Roberts. Yep. He has that conversation of like, here I am trying to like save the world and I've got all these people back home that I haven't been able to save. Yeah. And that idea gets internalized in him and I think he learns with the whole mm. Reggie situation. He could easily just turn his back and go, oh, you've chosen to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go with you. And he does sort of make that and he learns from what happened with Quincy. And it was very much a mirror image. Yeah. And you spoke about um, Oral. Oral. Yeah. And I, like, he's an important role obviously prior to the film in, in Carlton developing his faith he's very conservative though oh yeah and so it's sort of good to have those those pillars of difference where he is so conservative where you got this this guy who's spent you know 20 years looked at him like a son together been really close and to sort of see him s- step away from that he turns but, his back immediately yeah, really yeah oh, not, not even like oral turning his back but oh, for, sorry um, Carlton for Carl oh, to sorry. sort of take those small steps away from yeah. someone who's had such an important role in his life. But I think that's that clarity we're talking about. Like, mm-hmm. he was so sure on this change in interpretation that it didn't even matter. No. Because um, Oral Roberts was, in this film, portrayed really old school, yep. really white, mm-hmm. and we can get to race later on. Ultimately, uh, in 2019, watching this film, pretty backwards in his thinking, but 2020. still... Sorry. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> we, we got to 2020, didn't we? How crazy is that? Um, like a month in. But they paint him as a bit as pretty foolish yeah. in this film. And they, they soften that a little bit at the end when he sort of has that phone call saying, like, I miss you. And, yeah, and like, says, I still think about you and things like that. And I don't know whether... But th- th- that's tricky because is he just doing that because his son's, like, ripped him off? And I kind of I think that they're trying to save face a little bit because, oh, Roberts is a real dude. Yeah. Um, and from what I can gather... A very popular, a very charismatic kind of, obviously he passed away now, but a very popular and charismatic figure in this world. And, you know, they portray him to be a bit of a bit of a fool and a bit heartless and maybe he wasn't exactly that. So I, I don't know if that was just like a little bit of a, oh, we, you know, you're not need terrible. To, yeah, we yeah. need to keep face. Any other characters? No more no. characters. Right, well, no. The director, Joshua Marston. Joshua Marston. What, what did you find out about him? Well, he's quite well acclaimed with... Plenty of TV and film credits mm. from around about 2004. Yeah. Uh, for me, he wrote and directed a segment on New York I Love You, which is one of my favorite films, um, okay. about this sweet old couple. It's like a seven-minute segment. I think they're celebrating like their 60th anniversary and they're just going for a walk to this bench where they like had their... F- it's, and they're, there's, like, they're, they're bickering and it's, ah, it's nice. a very sweet little piece. Good. Um, but this is the first feature that he's done that he hadn't written himself. Yes, because he did one called Maria Full of Grace, which I hadn't heard of. Yeah, but won a few awards with awards, that. Yeah, and done a lot of um, directing for TV, yeah. like you mentioned. Like some big shows too, like yeah. Donovan, uh, Ray Donovan. Done a lot of Ray Donovan, yeah. Law and Order, The Good Wife, like yep. yeah, big shows. No, so. he's, he's been around. Yeah, which like we've touched on this, but the cast, like pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, man. Pretty like, good. <laughs> <sighs> I hate to have like movie star mentality. I know I've just gone so, yeah. you know, edgy falls on the movie star. I hate to have movie star mentality where you're like, oh, if you put me a good actor in a film, I'm going to like it. But that's kind of happened here. It did, yeah. A couple of good actors. And Same for me. Like, it's a diff- makes a difference. It sure does. Okay, scene time. Time to talk about some scenes that stood out for us. Scenes, well, I, I, I'll get more specific, but basically anything that had Chiwetel and Jason Segel <laughs> together. <laughs> stick. Pff, they were just awesome together. But um, more specifically, I was completely sucked into that very first sermon that he had about love and spreading love. I thought he was really enigmatic in that film. And it was a really nice introduction to Jason Segel's character as well when he's talking about like blacks and whites. And you see Segel looking sheepish when he starts talking funny things about white people. I'm like, look at this. He's like the whitest dude. He's such a <laughs> dag. Um, but he, you know, he's a great friend, a great support, and believes every word this guy's saying. So really good introduction to seeing there. Um, and I'm going to almost apologize here because there was a period there where I was just like, bang 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 because every scene just meant something to me so the scene at the diner so after he first told them about his thoughts and firstly he's with Reggie and that's when we find out Reggie's gay I don't think we found out before that did I miss something Uh, yeah probably I think that's when we found it out and and that's when he first said there's a difference between being gay and doing gay and then Oral comes in with his son um, who's also gay which we don't know not at this stage that's true sorry not at this stage (laughs) not at this stage Um, but he doesn't 
he starts talking about sorry um, Carlton starts talking about the fact that he doesn't feel like he needs to help people anymore um, and he just looks and he looks free of that burden that he had um, but you also notice this real black versus white separation in that sense where Carlton's there with Reggie Oral and his son sit on the other side of the table and it's real like old school new school you've got what you think of a, a gay guy and a guy who's just said there's no hell versus a, <laughs> oh if you do this it's all fine just retract what you said and everything's okay yep um, loved it just everything about that scene kind of fed into everything else we're about to see so and then that led into the sermon where he really doubles down on everything he's going to say <laughs> so we didn't really necessarily know which route he was going to well, take well they started they made it out to start like oh he's going to he's going to apologise <laughs> and then retract it <laughs> and I just loved it the suspense the build up the fact that he makes such a damn rational argument and then the crowd really toying with what they're hearing. Uh, some want to go, some are half cheering and celebrating. But again, a very black versus white scene where all the white people basically Got leave. Break, yeah. um, oh man, I love that scene. <laughs> um, it's a love fest. And then it goes to the next scene, basically, sorry, a bit long after, but it's when the guys, including Jason Siegel, come to his house. Um, and they're basically talking about, or they're, they're showing the power of their own beliefs. They're talking about what they built together, that chemistry, that love, but those two ca- those two actors feeding off each other in that yeah. scene was so powerful, man. I oh, one of the better scenes I've seen in a long time. <laughs> um, before he goes to the council to sort of plead his case, and and yeah. Lakeith Stanfield's character says, "Well, you know, what is the message that you're trying to portray?" And that's when you kind of realize that, yeah, he's he's feeling really close to God, and he's so sure on what he thinks, but. What is the message? He hasn't quite figured any of yeah. that stuff and, out And yet. those closest to him are but, confused as well. They, yeah. And they're the ones that are going to be impacted as much as anyone. Because there's a dinner scene with his wife as well where there's like that confusion where he, he thinks she's not supporting him. That's but right. She is, yeah. And she's kind of in this like really good mindset about mm, it. And he's yeah. still like, I want to know your opinion. It's yeah. um, and then the last scene that I've got there is is the scene where he leaves the church auction. So he just had that other chat with, with Henry or Jason Siegel's character and he just breaks down outside yep. and he's hyperventilating and he just can't understand because he truly believes um, what he's heard and what he thinks but he's kind of lost his voice and he feels stunted and he's like, so what's the purpose of all this? And you just you, you can really feel that in that scene and that performance and again, that's the claustrophobic camera work of him and the next scene is the one year later scene so like that's kind of it. Yep. That was the that tipping was it, point. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, nice. all those good, it, good bunch of scenes. Sometimes I just pick these little scenes or these little moments, but they were all seen, seen, seen. Loved it all. I've got some similar sort of stuff, but I like them for different reasons. Too. Great. So I didn't want to jump in off the back of them because I was like, oh, I think like the reason I like them are a little bit different. So I Great. wanted to give like the yeah. emphasis to what you had to say. So I, I enjoyed the first scene with Carlton on the plane with the lawyer. Oh yeah. I just thought that um, you know it was just nice to hear this someone who's sort of seems like they're lost a little bit with their faith, and he's like. Cause, and she's like, you know, what did you enjoy the most about your time with church? She's like, mm. my family. Yeah. And I just like thought that was really cool. And he's like, you know, that's okay. Let's sit together. Let's hold hands. Let's let's do this. And it was good that he was able to use that as a story in his in his sermons, um, which led into the, the first one that had you. Um, but you still feel like he was tired and not disinterested. Like no. he was just so good at what he did, he did. and he was so enigmatic. But um, again, it was dark as well. This 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 is one of your. This is probably my favorite scene. Um, ah, oh, not my favorite scene, but I really enjoyed the scene where Gina and and Carlton, um, after Henry had visited her by herself. Ah, oh, yep. Um, so this is where I finally started to see this change of her and the development of of Gina into more than this arranged relationship that we saw. She, you know, she makes this comment. I like because he's like, I just want to see the church go up in smoke. You don't really care about it. And she's like, No, like. I want to be part of something meaningful and mm. she finally sees that that meaning in him and from then on you sort of see her she's up in church like clapping and singing like there's just these little things where you see her that she wasn't doing before she was yeah, she was complaining yeah. about her hat now she's I'm into this because I feel this yeah. what, what's been said and, and how he's been touched by yeah, the word yeah. of God yeah. well, it's, um, it's funny because you get the idea that she's not as religious as everybody else mm. you know they have that scene at the very start where she gets the words wrong in a, yeah. in a and Sunday she says like I'm not the post to girl wife that yeah sort of thing. so when things like you get the feeling that her opinion is just discounted always like and she doesn't even have a voice in that world and as soon as he sort of starts to change she's like oh okay yeah. like I can see what see you're what saying, saying yeah. let's 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 do this together which I really liked and 
you mentioned the scene, but this was my favourite scene, and it's where Henry rocks up to that house and they have that conversation. And and you you mentioned that you really enjoyed um you know the banter or the the chat the between the connection between the two characters. For for me, um, it was seeing Gina like defend him. Yeah, like just yeah. for me, like the the her defending him and and the performance from Siegel in this was just so great. Um, and they finished off with you know each of you can always change your mind. Like either either, yeah. either, of them, either of them could change their mind if they wanted to, but. Siegel was so good in that scene and just that connection that Gina had like such a good scene I want to watch it again Jesse Ooh, ooh early we haven't even finished the podcast no I know Come on. no I just had, I, I want to watch that scene again <laughs> that scene good okay um, the, I, I mentioned this I really like the auction scene where they're selling off all the church's assets Carlton's pretty much done and dusted and you know Henry coming in and then I think you mentioned too he goes off and cries and that was just so powerful Oof, yeah. um, the scene where Carlton visits Reggie at the end yeah um like I said, but if prior, it was like with the uncle at the start. Yeah. It was like, you know, um, when the time comes, you'll be with God wherever it is. It doesn't matter where it is. And then that led on to Carlton leaving and he went down to like the water. He went down and he poured this water over his head. And to me, that was just the perfect symbol of, he was like baptizing himself yeah. of, this is the path I'm taking now. This is Rebirth. this is what, I'm, I'm baptizing myself in these beliefs that, Everyone should be accepted, mm. uh, especially after that conversation with Reggie. Yep. So he's like, I don't care who people are, I'm accepting everyone. And yep. I really liked that. I thought that was powerful. It's a great film, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what, is there anything that you didn't like? Uh, there's only one. Yep. Um, when he went to the African American Council. <laughs> oh, I think I only have one scene too, and it might be the same. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like he didn't really get the chance to plead his case. Yep. Um, I enjoyed the transition from that scene into the auction scene because mm-hmm. that was like, this is the impact of that what's just, just happened. happened. But he kind of said like one thing and he tried to make it relatable by bringing in that obviously His higher, dad or higher bishop that yeah, yeah. And meant reference the dad. But uh, he barely got to say anything else before everyone just condemned him and that was it. So that kind of annoyed me. I 100% agree with that. <laughs> the, the, the opportunity for him to speak to his peers... Um, it was not as impactful as it should have been. Yeah. His his speech should have been so much more impactful. And yeah, I get that in the end he didn't win with his speech or whatever. And maybe that's why they didn't push it to be yeah. this big redeeming speech because he it at wasn't. the end it yeah. wasn't. But um, he was pretty much removed from his post and yeah. that's what they leave it on. I was like, that didn't sit right with me. Yeah. it's um, Yeah. Again, we're talking about a true story here and that's what happened. Exactly. So I just feel like he didn't get a chance to really talk. Yeah. Like, Okay, that's all I had. To. <laughs> we should have watched this film together. We should. Like. <laughs> well, I was. I, I didn't want to because I, I love that hate you thought film. that I hated I it. So, what's this film saying? What are some things that some ideas, some thoughts? Well, let's let's talk about the religion side of things because I think it is quite a harsh take on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Pearson, the character feels more human the further he slips away from the conventional thinking of God. Yes, and I can understand if you are a religious person, that's pretty jarring um and it's a pretty strong pretty strong take from from the film let's not just say joshua marston because this is this is the entire film and probably maybe the character as well but i don't i don't know how well that sits with me and i'm not a particularly religious man myself i believe in god but i believe in god the way i believe in him i don't think that i necessarily need to abide by every word of the bible um but you know i believe there's a higher power and i believe he looks after us all rah rah but I, I do. I've just felt a little bit uneasy the way that they painted religion to be pretty, pretty negative. I agree with what you're saying, but I also took this this stance through the Henry character that it's okay to stand firm in your beliefs because you're still taking an honourable path regardless of the consequences of that. So, for um. For Carlton, the consequences of that are losing your church. For him, the consequences of that are losing a friend. So as as long as... I, I still thought that they didn't paint like Henry as, as a bad character, even no, though he's Henry, still stuck no. with um, like his faith. So it, it's a, it, I agree. It's a very tricky line and it's hard yeah. where it stands. But I, I believe what you're saying literally, because I think yeah. that literally that is the message of the film. But the fact that... Everyone's going to relate to that the wife character who is the most rational mm. and is the most normal. The fact that people like Oral, Oral, yeah, people like Oral and people like the the white people storming out of church when they've just made such a rational argument. Yeah. It all, they all seem like they're idiots, and I think that's you got to be really careful with that. I'll, I'll be honest, watching the film 
and and connecting with the film i didn't it didn't bother me i didn't think no, about it yeah. but it's on reflection i'm like be a, like you just need a, you need to have a little bit of social awareness not not, not that they've done a bad thing but mm. just be careful with what you're saying there that's that's one comment i've just thought yeah, of. and and it's like that's the effect of divisiveness too like the intolerance of other people's beliefs like you can still believe in the one god but you still can be intolerant to each other like to me that's like crazy like yeah and that's why I, I think I had this connection with Carlton where he's promoting this this gospel of inclusion. And, um, you know, the, the they'd make lots of mention about the emphasis on people misquoting the scripture. And they make that comment with the wife at the start as well, not just him as well. Yeah. But I think that if the message of this is trying to say, let people interpret things how they want. Like, it's like, if I talk about film... I, like we disagree there's no right or wrong answer we can both interpret it how we want so yeah. why can't that be the same for like religion at times which I agree and which is which is probably one of the reasons why it resonated with me because that's yeah. how I think yeah. of it yeah. um, I'd, be, I'd be very curious to see someone who is completely um, agnostic or just has no connection to religion whatsoever what they think of this film whether it still works in any way they might be able to connect with Carlton because that's almost what's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, what's... yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, I also I also think they explore really nicely the idea of a spiritual crisis versus spiritual clarity, because what starts as clarity for Carlton very quickly turns out to be crisis, and I think that um, is epitomised in that scene where he breaks down as he's like, "Hang on, this is supposed to be." the cleansing fuel for me mm. and all of a sudden I don't know what I'm doing I've lost everything that I thought I had so mm. it's a nice exploration there anything else? Um, well yeah I think it also more literally talks about the existence of God and yeah. his power and the idea of whether there's a hell or not hell, yep, hell and heaven and purgatory what are the what, yeah what is the it? Yeah. Right? I've got no answer on that yeah. and this film hasn't made me any no, closer no, to having an answer on and that and I don't, that wouldn't have been the point no, of it's certainly, it would, it's yeah. not, it's certainly not but I think the other thing that it does touch on nicely is that sense of purpose. Um, and when, despite having the period where we, we see this uh, free and, and unflustered character, as soon as he loses his purpose, he's all gone again, regardless of that connection he has with God. So, yeah. I, th- I think that it, it has this idea too that there's a reason for things. There's a reason why he had this revelation. There's, there's reasons for everything that happens in this film. And I while they may not give full explanations for, you know, like what we're saying with hell and heaven, I feel like for characters, there are reasons for their actions and everything that's happened. Yeah. I, I, I felt that. Yeah, for sure. What do we take away from this film? So my, my love for this film, as I sort of said before, is purely on the face value and the visceral connection that I had whilst I was watching it. So I was really moved by the performances and I was drawn in by the questions that the film was asking. But you know, a movie like this is saying a lot about religion and there's a social responsibility attached to it. But um, I actually connected with, with the ideas of Bishop Pearson because it's kind of the God that I believe in. <laughs> so, like, that's, you know... So it's, it's well... I can't weird, ignore... Yeah. I can't ignore that. That's a reason why I like the film. So, yeah. um, But I, I also would have loved to have watched this in the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I... I think you can get a little bit lost by not watching a film like this in the cinema. Like, I think I paused it twice just because I don't know whether like a dog was playing up or I had to, you know, get something out. I don't know what it was, but it would have added to the overall atmosphere. Cause just it's, being able it's, to watch it from the start to the end. In a dark room, in a massive screen. Um, and some of that music would have been awesome too. Like, I love that sort of gospel, like upbeat yeah, sort of music. But like, those scenes excellent. with that big dialogue would have just, mm. oh, it would have like melted out of those uh, speakers. We loved it. What are, you, what are you taking away from this film? Yeah, like this is a new story for me. So yeah. I enjoyed and yeah. like I, I love my history. So I do like learning about people that are significant in the world who, yeah. are, who have done things that, you know, that I feel like I, I connected with him because I thought what he was doing was positive. So yeah. to me, this is a good story to learn about someone who, who I didn't know about and who I am happy to now talk to people and go, hey, I, you know, even today before we, we recorded this podcast, I was like, talking to a colleague and he's talking about you know um uh, you know what do you oh, i got youth group on tonight i'm like oh i just watched this film um about this pastor who did he know him? no i had no <sighs> idea i was like i don't want to tell you too much of the story about this is what happened and, and you know this is this is where he was at and i was like you know it's a really cool yeah, yeah, yeah. really straight cool away look at you peddling i know so yeah that, that's ask your I'm colleague at. if he believes in hell or not 
Gee, I didn't want to push that. <laughs> I didn't want to push. <laughs> didn't want to press, push the the, um, the friendship. All right, IMDb. Did you get on at any stage to check anything out? The only reason I jumped on IMDb yeah. was to look up who directed it. Okay. Because I was just I was loving it. Um, I thought it was a big film with big actors, and I just wasn't sure who directed it. I'd, I'd not heard of Joshua Marston until until this. Yeah. I didn't didn't get on. This yeah. is the first time in a while. Didn't didn't jump on. So a lot of recognizable faces that helps. Yeah. Have you got any questions? Um. Well, yeah. I, like we haven't. We can't don't ask me if there's a heaven or hell because like, I'm not giving you an answer. <laughs> well, like, I was going to say without going too deep, what are your thoughts on his philosophies on God being? more merciful than some might believe and the existence of hell but like <laughs> I, I just like the idea that you don't have to answer it but no, no I'll answer it in a roundabout way yeah, like yeah. I'm not gonna probably give you the, the full answer like the direct answer but my like I just feel like that if you're able to preach acceptance tolerance and love then that's the sort of faith that I would be interested in yeah no fair. matter like your gender your orientation your race <clears throat> your, whatever your religion like accept everyone for who they are and um, and that that's that's my thoughts on this yeah. and that's that's what i sort of took from this is that there's this one guy who's in this very um in this religiously biased place that has such strong beliefs in their doctrine that um it's nice to see him sort of break away and be like hey we can still believe in everything that you're saying but how about we more accept more others. Yeah. We accept more people. We be more inclusive. What's wrong yeah. with that? Like, yeah, I know. I yeah, I think, and that, but yeah, that was I, what was yeah. so good about those passages that he pulled out in that in that um that sermon, basically saying explicitly <laughs> that like yeah, anyone can come in the kingdom of heaven, sort of thing. Yeah, you don't have to believe. You don't have to follow me your whole life. Yeah, and I think I think like that, that's a that's the thing about studying like texts or books or films like there are so many ways to interpret things and I don't think people should be telling people how to interpret things. That's what, that's what we're in a society where people are strong enough to believe and think how they want to think. So good on this guy for actually like challenging that. And we got your answer way. in the end, Jesse, that wasn't even roundabout. Huh? I'm just like, good on this guy for challenging it and being like, this is what I, this is what I took from it. What's wrong with that? Are um, you going to listen to this American life? It's a good question. Um, Probably, I have such a bank of podcasts. Like I had to get a go, bank of everything. So Jesse's uh, got a watch list on Letterbox of like two thousand films that he doesn't even like check out anymore. You've over exaggerated. That's 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 like double what's on there. <laughs> I've only got about a thousand. Ah. Come, on. Come on. Now I like I literally had to delete like some photos off my phone to make room for podcasts. I've got that many podcasts downloaded. Ready. You got to stop listening to our podcast, mate. I listen to <laughs> I listen to podcasts at double speed so I can get through machine through them, but oh, I'm just Jesse. struggling to keep up. Um, just, just take so, a step back and enjoy it. So probably not. I'll say no. Okay. I might listen to it. And I'll blame Sean Fennessy for putting out like an hour and a half podcast every second day. Yeah, but <laughs> I'll be frank. You know, sometimes the back half of those episodes aren't... Uh, I love... Know. The interviews with the creative people are great. Only... But sometimes I talk a lot about a film that I haven't seen that I don't okay. want to know. Generally, they do a good job of not spoiling. Yeah. So we're talking about the big picture uh, <laughs> podcast. If anyone's interested in listening, I'm to sorry if someone listens to Big to, to Flix Four and they listen to the big, the big picture. picture. <laughs> you, you hope so. And Sean Fennessy is now on Letterbox. So <coughs> he is, yeah. In his latest episode, he mentioned that he's spent some time on Letterbox. So I love that. Okay. That was great. Not that we have any link to Letterbox. We just uh, like it as or a Sean Fennessy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any other questions that's all mate what do you got you I don't really I just have a statement okay I just thought what a title come Sunday like when that was dropped into the dialogue that's good the wasn't line, it I yeah. just had this moment I was like because he's like it was I think it was from um, oral, uh, was, the oral dude and yeah, he's like come Sunday it. make this right yeah. oh, and I was I... like Sunday came and he did not make this right and I love that still yeah. so yeah. that that was just a statement very nice sorry no question no nah, that's good <laughs> yeah I can't really answer that I also liked it. Did you like, did you like did you, so, um, Let's go back. Did you like the title? <laughs> yeah, good call. Do you think that it should have been... No. All right, so time to wrap it up. I think we are. Let's do this. Yeah. So we give our films a rating out of five, then average it out. MJ, drums rolling. Yeah, well, I've said it all already, but I was completely stirred by this film, particularly the performance of Chiwetel Ejiofor. Every single scene felt like it was important. And, and the questions it raised not only resonated with me, but they got me thinking and considering my own perspective. Well, this is a great movie. And I feel like I'm being a little bit conservative, but I'm, I'm giving it four stars. Very nice. Four. Four's Come, a big... Coming into this, I was like, okay, I'm thinking maybe one and a half, two. <laughs> How do I even this out so it's not too big a oh, discrepancy? Right. Uh, this was a belter, mate. Um, I, like, I enjoyed the performances in this so much. Um, I really enjoyed 
learning about a character in life who I hadn't heard about before. I really enjoyed what he had to say as a character. Um, so I'm giving it three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. And you were trying to pull it up. <laughs> yeah. So three and a half out of five. That gives us a 3.75. You're allowed to change that. Nothing no, no, I, I had it steady stone at three. Like, that was where I was at. I mean, after this conversation, I was like, this film could be even better than I thought. But. Yeah. 3.75. That's pretty That's big, high. man. That's, That's huge. huge. Yeah. That's we don't have heater to pull it down. <laughs> Poor heater. All right. Well, we're on social media. Mm. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We, are. we have Instagram. We are on Podbean. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. Wherever, what a lot of places. Cast box, wherever you can find yeah. good podcasts. Google yeah. search. Or even bad Facebook. podcasts. We're probably there as well. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> we like to have a question. So this question's like a little bit deep. I was like, oh, I need something a little bit this, deep. To this could be a this, deep. Because this was a deep No, nah, this is all right. So will the world ever accept differences even when there's disagreement? No, not the world. The world's too big. I need... Th- I want... That's what... That, I would love that. If by the time so I... Right. By the time I roll over and cark it, if... We could accept most things. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, I was I'll just be lovely. I was walking to work today, and someone was looking at me funny, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and I, it started to annoy me. I had my headphones in, and it started to annoy me that this person was looking at me funny. And I thought, why is my first thought when someone's looking at me funny to be negative? And I'm like, I'm the problem, you know. Like you sit there and you, you walk past people in the street, and you're just like, oh, who's this idiot? Like, what's this guy doing? Imagine if you just thought about everyone in such a positive light and go, oh, this person, I hope they're having yeah. a good day. Or, yeah. And 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 I'm a particular, I'm a generally pretty positive person, and I, I do have time for a lot of people. But even that mindset, and that's, a lot of people are just like that, and that's yep. that's how humans are, and it sucks. If you can think of a way to change it, man, you are like Nelson Mandela. That's that's big. That's big. Yeah. So unfortunately, I think it's not going to be for no... either of us. I don't think, but um, <laughs> no. hopefully, there's someone out there that can. Hopefully, there is. Crack. No, I agree. It'd be nice. great, like the anti-Hitler to really pull the troops together. Um, uh, yeah, sadly, I don't think that's going to happen, though, Jesse. That's right. I was just being optimistic. We can be optimistic, pessimistic. Okay, so next week we're back. Oh, yeah, what have we got? We have another 2018 film. We're making that's our probably, way through 2018 still slowly. In April, April 2018. April 2018. I mean. So a few months to go. It's a French film. A few months to go. A few months. Well, a few months to kick through to year and a half. Twenty nineteen. Oh, really? <laughs> oh man. Um, French romantic comedy oh, from twenty eighteen. Um, Foreign yep. language film. It's called "I Am Not an Easy Man." Cool. I haven't included the translation or the French title because I don't want to stuff it up. Yeah, embarrassing. It's directed by Eleanor Parat and it stars Vincent Albers, Marie Sophie Ferdinand, and Paris. Oh, sorry, Paris Benitz and Moon Daily. Okay. Did you say romantic comedy? It is a romantic comedy. Cool. That could be a bit of fun. Could be. Hope so. Was um Blockbuster, Blockbuster. was that French? It was French as yeah, well. Okay, yeah. Cool. So another another French film, which is good. Film. So that'll be next week. All right. I'll make be there. sure you've got the um the dub on in French with the English subtitles. Remember when we watched that anime film and I had the bloody <laughs> English dub and it was uh I watched it for like three minutes with the English dub. I'm like, are you guys got English dub? I'm like, no, no, it's Japanese. No, it's Japanese. <laughs> All right, we'll get that right. Good. Nice chat. And glad we had a film that we awesome both enjoyed. Chat. I'm glad that I surprised you with what I yeah, thought of it. Massive surprise. I'm, I'm, I love that. That was great. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. You certainly will. See you, mate.